It's time now to continue our series on mammograms and you. Today we're focusing on your personal risk. Dr. Denise Reddy from Scottsdale Medical Imaging is here with more. Thanks so much for coming on again. Thank you for having me. All right, let's talk about people who are at high risk. I hear that they should get mammograms early or more often, but a lot of people don't really understand what is high risk. Okay. So when we're talking about risk, what we mean is a woman's chance of developing breast cancer during her lifespan. So most women are average risk, that means they have about a 12% chance of developing breast cancer, but some women are higher risk, and that means they have a 20% or greater chance of developing breast cancer during their lifetime. And are there different recommendations depending on what your risk level is? There are. So for women who are average risk, the American Cancer Society recommends that they get a mammogram every year beginning at the age of 40. For women who are high risk, the American Cancer Society recommends that they get both a mammogram and a breast MRI every year. Now for women who are in that intermediate risk category, it's not quite as clear cut. They need to talk to their doctor about whether they need any additional imaging besides their mammogram. Okay, and we talked about the mammogram too. What's the MRI? So a breast MRI is another imaging tool that we use. It does not use radiation, it uses very powerful magnetic and radio waves. And MRI is very good at seeing those small early cancers, so it's a great tool for women who are high risk. The problem is, is that the MRI sometimes doesn't see the tiny cancers that we can see on a mammogram, so you still need a mammogram. And an M MRI is so sensitive that sometimes it leads to false positives. So we don't wanna do an MRI in all women because it would lead to a lot of unnecessary biopsies. We like to reserve it for women who are high risk. Okay, now what about um, genetic risk? We heard so much about Angelina Jolie um, when she you know, learned that she um, was at a high risk because of her mother and what she chose to do. So um, what, do you find, what do you do if you find out you have a genetic risk? So there's a small percentage of women like Angelina Jolie who carry mutations in genes that put them at a high risk for breast cancer. And the most common or the most well-known genes are the BRCA1 and 2 genes. Now, if you are at risk for having these genes, we recommend that you undergo genetic counseling. And when you come to a facility like ours at SMILE, we'll ask you four or five very specific family history questions. And these are a screening tool. If you answer yes to any of these, we'd suggest you talk to your doctor or go see a genetic counselor. And it's really important, most women don't need to see genetic counselors. For those women that are high risk, it's important to talk to one so that they can better understand their risk and understand what treatment or surveillance options are available for them. And, and that's what I was going to ask you too because what you know how do you know if you are high risk or intermediate risk or low risk? So we talk about these risk numbers and there are some tools available online at cancer.gov there's a breast ri cancer risk um, assessment tool that you can use if you go to our website there's a link to a breast cancer tool and it basically asks a few questions and gives you a number now if it says you're high risk it doesn't mean you're definitely going to get breast cancer but it gives you some helpful information all right a lot of great information today once again thanks so much and, the, and the next time we talk um, we're going to answer more of your questions too. So thanks again for coming in. Thank you.